Hey everyone, you're here with the Vigilant Chris Mario, and you're here for another edition of New Age Movement Exposed. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about my personal experience as a yoga instructor, and how I realized that yoga is in fact a satanic spiritual practice that no one should be participating in. Now I know right off the bat, now that sounds like an extreme claim, and it might be hard for a lot of you to believe, but please, watch this entire video before making your conclusion on this subject. So things we're going to talk about is, like I said, my personal experience, as well as the spiritual roots of yoga, and Christian yoga, which is gaining popularity in modern culture today, and how Christians should have nothing to do with this. So let's get uh, right into it. So seven years ago, I started to experience depression and anxiety, and I went to a psychologist, and a lot of psychologists nowadays are utilizing New Age occult techniques for healing. Now, this is exactly what happened to me. My psychologist would talk to me about meditations that I could use uh, for the anxiety and the depression, and especially yoga. So it wasn't long before I got involved with yoga, and I absolutely loved it. So I started an apprenticeship at my local yoga center in Hatha Yoga. Hatha Yoga means uh, moon and sun, light and dark, male and female. The principle behind it is to balance um, these polarities within yourself. Now this is a flawed spiritual concept that I'm going to talk about in future videos but just to give you an idea this is what I was involved with and this is extremely occult and at its very core satanic. Now what does yoga actually mean? Well if you go to Google right now and you put yoga the definition that's going to come up is a Hindu spiritual and aesthetic discipline a part of which include breath control, simple meditation, and the adoption of bodily postures. So I want you to notice right there, it says a Hindu spiritual practice. So this is, it finds its roots in false religion. All right, so in my studies, I had to study the Bhagavad Gita, which is the Hindu spiritual text. And one thing also is to realize that each posture that you're doing when you do yoga is a posture of worship to a to a Hindu god alright so a lot of people when they get involved with yoga they don't have a clue about this they're really clueless you know they're doing it very naively but at its spiritual roots this is uh, it's based on false religion so we shouldn't have anything to do with this now one of the other things that I got heavily involved with is Kundalini Yoga now, Kundalini Yoga is the most satanic yoga that you can possibly find out there. It's basically, the philosophy is that there is a dormant uh, spiritual serpent at the base of the spine. And you will go through a process of what they call the Kundalini Awakening. In the Kundalini Awakening, it is, it's said that the Kundalini Serpent will then climb up your spine and go through the chakra system until it reaches the pineal gland and the crown chakra where you will then experience what's called God Realization. So as the serpent climbs and reaches the top and the third eye is called uh, the Eye of Wisdom, it will then convince you that you are a god because the final step in yoga is god realization which is to to realize that you are god and that everything is god now i do want to point out that in genesis of the bible the serpent said to eve that if we would eat from the fruit of the tree of knowledge and wisdom that we would become gods this is the same spiritual deception that we find in kundalini yoga we awaken within ourselves at the base of us our spine a spiritual serpent that will then climb and through the third eye the the apple of wisdom receive enlightenment ascension god realization but this isn't true this is actually like the deepest spiritual deception that a human being could ever bring about um, onto himself so this is what happened to me. I went through what's called the Kundalini Awakening. Now, not everyone goes through it the same way. I actually had um, some very devastating symptoms. And you can do your research on this. It's called Kundalini... If you Google Kundalini Dangers, you're going to see that a lot of... Exp uh, people experience physical, mental, and spiritual symptoms. I would be sitting there um, and getting vivid dreams and visions, and my stomach was was in knots all the time, and I was having 
physiological pain. And I, I thought this was all part of the process. Because if you read the spiritual text, they say, oh, no, no, this is part of it. Don't worry about it. Now, the reason that you're experiencing this is because you're opening yourself up to the demonic spirits. The Kundalini serpent is essentially a demonic spirit. It is Lucifer within yourself that you are now activating. And he is getting possession of your mind and your body and soul. All right, come on, people. It's a serpent at the base of your spine. Do you want to be waking up the snake that's going to make you think you're a god? This is absolutely satanic, and we shouldn't have anything to do with this or kundalini awakening. Now, there is also a false Jesus that we find in yoga. Here's a book that I'm showing you on your screen, and this was in my studies um, something that I gravitated to. And here is a false Christ in the word uh, of God, the Bible, um, it talks about that there's going to be these false Christs. This isn't the real Jesus Christ, the Son of God. This is an angel masquerading as um, uh, as Jesus. It's a false Jesus. Because this one is all about ascension. It's all about reincarnation. It's all about Hindu false religion concepts. And it, it's not true biblical Christianity. So you need to be very careful because they're going to try and convince you that um, this Jesus is the real Jesus. He's the reincarnation of Buddha. And I did a video on this, uh, who is Jesus, and I'm going to leave the link in the description section for you. I've already exposed that this is a false Christ, and he finds himself, of course, in yoga. And we need to steer clear of this and to learn what Christ truly represented so these false Christs won't deceive us like I was deceived for a very, very long time. The other issue that I wanted to talk about is Christian yoga that we find now creeping into our churches. In the end times, the Bible says there's going to come a great falling away. Yoga was never in the church before, and now we see it creeping in because we are approaching the day of the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So what the enemy is doing is he's infiltrated the church and masquerading as something positive. And a lot of Christians are naively just adopting this and thinking that, oh, it's not a big deal. Well, yoga is a Hindu spiritual practice. We are not to have any other gods, one true God. Um, and if you're uh, practicing a Hindu spiritual practice and you're a Christian, um, there's something really wrong with that. Now, another element uh, that I would like to warn Christians about, and I'm going to play a quick little video here, is just to go through the concepts of Kundalini Yoga. Now, if you are going to have a Kundalini Awakening, the best way to have it is going to see a guru. And the guru himself, what he'll do is, as I'm showing you on the screen, he's going to um, touch your forehead. This is called Shakti Pot. And when it's uh, practiced, he will transfer his spiritual energy into you. And a lot of people will then fall down. Um, they're going to shake. Some bark like animals. Some laugh uncontrollably. These are the spiritual manifestations of the Kundalini spirit. And brothers and sisters, we need to be careful. These type of activities have found their way into our church. And because this, the serpent can masquerade as an angel of light... Um, a lot of this is creeping into the church, and we need to be very, very vigilant so that we do not adopt false spirits within our church. As I said, there's a great falling away, and this is due to the, to the fact that we're not going to endure sound doctrine. And sound doctrine specifically states that we are to test the spirits. And when we see these type of manifestations coming up in our churches, um, we should be really worried about these things. And we should look into them. I'm not saying that every single time that th these things are happening that God isn't doing something. But here's the thing. I speak to some brothers and sisters who go to churches um, and there's these type of manifestations. And they'll tell me, well, Mario, you know, I felt such an amazing feeling of love. How could it not be God? Well, when I had my Kundalini awakening, there was a feeling of love, an emotional high that I experienced. I also would fall on the ground and laugh and all these things. I've experienced these Kundalini experiences. And it was so deceiving that in that moment, there's no way you could have convinced me that it wasn't God. All right, so brothers and sisters, stand firm in the scriptures when they tell you um, that, that Satan can masquerade as an angel of light, that we are to test the spirits. And 
that we shouldn't really be adopting these things. So just be warned. I might do videos in the future if I feel the Spirit is leading me in that direction to warn you even more about these manifestations. But please, do not listen to your heart. Um, take everything that is happening and test it with the Scriptures um, to see if it's of God. And that's what we're called to do. So just in recapping, going through what we just talked about here, Brothers and sisters, we should not be practicing these things. Um, these postures are Hindu uh, worship postures for Hindu gods. Um, they will end up awakening the Kundalini serpent at the base of the spine, which will bring you to the, the same lie that the serpent said to Eve in the garden. Um, so stay far, far away from this. If I am going to recommend something, I'm going to recommend that we practice Pilates. Now, there is nothing wrong with stretching and breathing and relaxing. The part that's wrong is that we offer this in a yogic practice. So Pilates is basically yoga without the spiritual aspect. So it forget the word yoga because that word itself means to yoke to these Hindu gods and we're not to do that. Um, so Pilates has eliminated that, and all you're going to be doing in Pilates is stretching and breathing, which is absolutely great for you to do, and can have an amazing benefits on your body. So if you really are feeling that you want, this is a style of exercise that you like, you don't like doing weights, and you like, you know, uh, just using your body and these type of things, just do uh, Pilates. If you do notice when you're going to go to a yoga center, there's going to be statues of Buddha. Um, I've been to yoga centers where there's tarot cards. Um, there's all sorts of occult spiritual things all over the place and symbols. Brothers and sisters, we shouldn't be in these things and we shouldn't be there. Um, for those people out there uh, who are yoga teachers, I know this is very, very hard to get, and you need to understand that you are spiritually blinded. You have awakened the serpent, and he's a deceiver. Lucifer can masquerade as an angel of light, and he is the father of lies. He's not going to appear the way the media paints him out to be. He's going to come and deceive us in a very, very cunning way. He's the father of lies, so that would mean that he's the master of it. And with yoga, this is an absolute spiritual lie. There's no salvation in this. There's salvation in Jesus Christ alone. And he is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one makes it to the Father but by him. So everyone, God bless you all, and stay vigilant.